thank you. So our interest in hosting this event is because people who engage in mentoring, either as mentors or mentees, have a greater opportunity at career advancement. As some people may be shy or reluctant to mentoring or offering mentoring, we like to use this event to demystify what mentor mentoring is and how you could benefit from it. We will start with a, a brief introduction to Women in Big Data, who is sponsoring this event, uh, followed by a short panel discussion and then a 45 minute speed mentoring session. Uh, and then we will be closing our event, um, reviewing your mentoring session and then closing the event. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, Women in Big Data, um, we are a worldwide organization with over 18,000 members. Our mission is uh, to cultivate tangible opportunities for women, I unlock potential through accessible training, act as a catalyst for advancement with thought leadership promotion and empower equity allies of any gender with inclusive mentorship program and as you could see we we keep growing uh, and there's 18 thousand members as of last uh, December last year so we're still growing uh, there will be additional contact details if you would like to join women in big data and other various social events through Lumen Big Data. We'd like to start with a short poll about mentoring and where you are in this process. So, Anna, can you start the poll, please? Sorry, is the result gonna pop up on the top? I'm not, <laughs> sorry. There you go. So it sounds like both, um, most of you, well, half of you have been both a mentor and a mentee. And there's like a mixed level of how comfortable you are with it. Uh, we hope that those of you on the bottom of a comfort level, we could get you up at least one level up through this event. Okay, let's get started on our panel discussion. We have three panelists here that uh, we will be introducing. Um, please, everyone, keep yourself muted as we go through this portion and use the chat for any questions that you may have. We will be asking the panelists uh, towards the end if we that if time allows. First, we have Vidya. Um, can we spotlight Vidya perhaps? And yeah. Vidya yeah. Um, has been working in data analytics for four years. She has worked on a number of projects involving public institutions, analyzing data, uncovering insights, and presenting findings to key audiences. Presently um, enrolled at Azusa Pacific University for a graduate degree in applied statistics, analytics, and she is aiming to work as a biostatistician in the healthcare industry. For the past two years, she has actively participated in Women in Big Data programs as a member. As a Women in Big Data Data Science Olympian program participant, Vidya recently led a team to a successful completion 
of a Kaggle challenge on image segmentation of cancer and developing a 3D model. We also have Lisa. Um, Lisa is a partner technology manager at Five9, sharing her passion for Five9 with many partners from technology to system integrators. She also works closely with Five9 product teams, providing real world input on Five9 solutions. Uh, Lisa has over 10 years of IT background, plus an additional 15, over 15 years in pre-sales support. She's considered one of the experts in 5.9 and CRM integration with expertise in Salesforce, ServiceNow, and Microsoft. Lisa also has an extensive time working with IVR, speech recognition, voice biometrics industry, including voice authentication, voice design, multi-channel interfaces, for natural language customer service and applying the knowledge into 5.9's broader artificial intelligence solutions. We also have Deborah, who is a certified career coach with a private practice. She specializes in coaching technology and business professionals at all career levels. She's also a certified program manager and certified agile professional from the Project Management Institute. Deborah holds two master's degree from Stevens Institute of Technology. She's on the board of advisors for Women in Big Data and is a huge participant of many, or sorry, leading many mentoring programs and is member uh, mentoring director for the organization. So perhaps if we could stop sharing the screen and um, highlight our panelists. So let, I will be asking a few questions to all of you in the panel. Um, please keep your responses to two minutes, uh, under two minutes as, po as much as possible. Vidya, um, can you tell us the various mentoring opportunities you have engaged with either through Women in Big Data or elsewhere? We would we'll like to hear at this time what mentoring programs you've participated in. Um, please save your comments about what you gain for, from these programs for a few, few, uh, future question. Yeah, uh, hello everyone. Um, thank you, Amiko, for a brief introduction. Uh, I have been a member with uh, Women in Big Data for over two years, and I have participated in a couple of the programs. So last year, I attended uh, Getting From Here to There program, which is a peer group format where I got an opportunity to meet women who are in the transition to data science. And again, in this year, um, I participated in getting from here. So this year, they, uh, they introduced us with the Cooper platform where uh, women can share their articles or any related resources that will help with uh, everyone. And also they put us in a group of uh, two, uh, two to three women. So we used to meet every once a week and my partner was already a data scientist. So I got an opportunity to know what kind of technology and what type of uh, problems they are going to solve in their company. And uh, in the spring, I again enrolled to, um, uh, sorry, for, sorry, for summer, I enrolled to Emerging Technology Program, where it is a 101 mentoring session. Uh, I had an opportunity to meet my mentor uh, regularly, like every 15 days. So I used to build a goal. So every time we used to speak what we need to achieve through their goal. So my mentor is already have a idea like what we are going to talk. And uh, I mainly benefited in terms of networking and uh, interviewing skills in the session. And uh, recently I enrolled for data science Olympian program, uh, which is like a team format. Uh, they put us in a group of four to five women, and uh, we made like a data challenge. So we participated in a Kaggle competition. 
uh, where we build a 3D model for image segmentation for cancer. So this uh, program is a great opportunity in terms of leadership and uh, managing the team. And right now I'm enrolling with a Mentor in Tech International, which is also a one-on-one mentoring program. So for the experienced women, so I'm looking forward to meet my mentor over this week. Thank you. Thank you, Vidya. Lisa, same question to you. Can you share what programs you participated either as a mentor or mentee, if any? Sure, and thank you for the introduction. Uh, so for me, I look at mentoring in two formats as informal and formal. Informally, uh, given my age, I have had many informal mentors and I, I've also been an informal mentee. Uh, just living your life and, and working, you learn from so many people who influence you. From a formal perspective, uh, my formal mentoring actually began uh, when I started my career at Salesforce. Uh, Salesforce has an official mentoring program that they, uh, that they provide to all new employees, uh, giving you the opportunity to selectively, they choose a mentor for you and they help you. So I was a mentee in that, uh, in that arena, but I was very inspired with it by it because Salesforce also supported VTO, volunteering time off. And so I went looking for volunteering opportunities and I thought, gosh, I've got so much experience to share. Maybe I'll go find a, a, a mentoring, like volunteer mentoring. And I found, I actually did some volunteer mentoring through Everwise. It's now known as uh, Torch IO, uh, but I did do some mentoring. Uh, in one particular, I mentored uh, a woman who was uh, an executive, and she was trying to figure out how to work with men and how to engage with men to get what she needed to, to advance, you know, to, to navigate that sometimes tricky world. Uh, so that's been my experience uh, as a mentor and a mentee. Thank you, Lisa. Dave, same to you. Uh, can you share any mentoring programs that you participated in? Sure, and thank you for the question, Miko, and for facilitating this event for us. Um, in my professional life, I've had uh, numerous uh, opportunities to participate both as a mentor and a mentee, and also to organize and run mentoring programs. Uh, let me tell you just about a few of them. While at the New York Stock Exchange, I was a member of the committee that started a women in technology mentoring program and then ran that program for two years. When I moved to BNY Mellon, I participated in a one-on-one -on -one mentoring program as a mentee and also in a peer group mentoring program as a mentee, which both of these were focused on leadership development. Also at BNY Mellon, I became a member of a committee uh, to help organize a sponsorship program. Sponsorship, slightly different than mentoring, still with the purpose of advancing people's careers, but using different techniques, uh, working with a sponsorship program for women in technology. In my community life, I have been a mentor for a number of youth programs, particularly working with preteens in a coming of age mentoring program. So thank you for the question, Amiko. Well, thank you. As you could see, we have a with, uh, breadth of different experiences that these panelists uh, can offer. For the next, next question, uh, Lisa, we'll start with you this time. Uh, we know a person who volunteers to be a mentor does not does so to help others. And that is a big part of being a mentor. However, please tell us about what other value or benefit you gain by participating as a mentor, how these experiences improve you and help your career. Thank you. Uh, that's a great question. As a matter of fact, uh, Deb, when you were talking, I was thinking, oh my gosh, I also mentor. I coach a baseball team, a uh, special needs baseball team. And I work with 
kids anywhere from 14 to 30 years old on my baseball team. And there's always that opportunity to mentor them and help them grow in their careers as baseball players. So I thank you. I'm glad you mentioned so many, made me think of things. Um, from my perspective, um, it, where it's really helped me in my career is um, that informal mentoring, uh, people that have inspired me in my career, um, who I've watched, who, who didn't realize they were mentoring me, but were mentoring me. Um, and in case in one situation, uh, that mentor, informal mentor, helped me find the career that I'm in today, which is sales engineering. I had no idea there was, there's not a degree in sales engineering, uh, yet it's a very important job because you get to be technical and you get to be position value. And so for that, I gained a tremendous benefit in my career. The other thing that I've learned is uh, just some basic uh, interaction skills listening before speaking, uh, asking open-ended questions, not solving, but allowing the mentee to come to their uh, next step by listening to them and asking those questions, allowing the mentee to, to solve the problem. Don't solve the problem for them. And um, I've applied this to child rearing as well. <laughs> so when I was raising my son, uh, some of these lessons in these that I learned helped me better engage with my son as he grew up. Uh, it, he was more uh, open because, you know, it's often uh, a challenge that we have in mentoring our children uh, to say, how was your day? What are they going to say? Great. <laughs> yes. No. What I would say something like, tell me one great thing that happened today or tell me something challenging that happened today and how did you solve it? How did you get around it? Or did you not? Well, talk to me about it. And uh, that's some of the things that I've learned from being a mentor. Uh, so that's that's sort of my, that's been my experience. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like mentoring can be a benefit not only in the career, but in your personal lives as well. Dave, um, as a person who organizes mentoring firms, how would you summarize the mission or intent of mentoring programs and benefit for its participants? Yeah, thank, thanks for that question, Amiko. It's important to realize that as many mentoring programs as there are, there is as much variety in the mission and the intent of the mentoring program. And that's one of the main items that a person uh, initiating a mentoring program decides early on what is the target audience for the mentoring program that they're designing and creating, and what do they hope that the participants will gain from them. So having said that, when you're looking for a mentoring program, either to participate as a mentee or as a mentor, it is worthwhile to look at what is the purpose of this particular program? Is it technical skill development? Is it leadership development? Is it business acumen development? Is it for expanding one's network? There's a variety of purposes, all of them valid, and you want to choose the one that aligns with what need you have at that time. So in general, career-based mentoring programs focus on helping the uh, mentees navigate their career path. And Lisa just gave some really excellent examples of how mentoring is guiding the exploration, not like a coach or a teacher where they're purposely picking out exercises for the participant to work on. In a mentoring program, uh, the mentee really is navigating the uh, purpose or the steps, the stages of the engagement by examining their priorities and making decisions based on those priorities, by exploring with their mentor greater perspectives, uh, by getting feedback from the mentor. 
and of course, the mentor is there for support and for motivation. Now, um, also, uh, Lisa gave a great uh, answer to the benefits of being a mentor. So if you are looking at a program um, as from the mentor's point of view, you want to look at both the extrinsic values that you'll receive in participating with that program. What skills will you have to draw on maybe to uh, help your mentee and in doing so will enhance your ability with those skills as well as the intrinsic values of the personal satisfaction and giving something. So thank you for that question, Aniko. Thank you, Deborah. Um, now next, Vidya. I know, like as we heard, you've participated in a lot of uh, mentoring programs. What have you gained from these experiences? Yeah, uh, thank you, Amiko, for this question. Um, I have participated in a couple of programs, so let me tell you like what I gained from each program. So from the uh, first program, which I did is uh, getting from here to there. Uh, this program is an opportunity in terms of networking. So I met many women who are in the career of like different careers, like a lawyer, and they wanted to transition to uh, data science. So, and also like um, meeting like a, a partner, like a team partner, like a once a week. And uh, we have the goals and uh, I used to share like what's, what are the skills I have, what I, what are the skills I doesn't have. So she always give me the feedback of like, uh, what kind of resources I need to uh, learn. So that is really beneficial for me. And also she, uh, my partner was working as a data scientist. So she gave me a brief idea, like a data analyst and data scientist role is completely different. So there are a few of the technologies will be good for uh, to be a data scientist. So that is one of the thing I learned from the program and from uh, emerging technologies program, which is mainly of mentoring one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I like this program because it mainly curated based on my needs. So being a mentee, like I had a hard time like talking with the people and even in a, like a large group. So my mentor took me to the process like, what is needed in order to improve my skills. And one of the best advice I got from her is uh, journaling. So I always keep writing down if I like, uh, if they talk something and if I like in anything related to that. So I used to keep journaling and I used to apply the same thing in my next con conversation. And uh, in the data Olympic program, so initially I started as a member, but later I have to take up as a team leader. So it has an opportunity because I was working in a deep learning, which is completely new to me. I never worked on deep learning. So I have to learn the um, uh, skill set, and I have to we have to complete within a four weeks of challenge. And uh, it has a team, uh, it helps me in team building and like how to manage a team and uh, like if there is any obstacles. So it's a great opportunity in terms of leadership skills. And right now with the Tech International, I'm looking forward to gain some more experience with my uh, mentor. Thank you. Thank you for all for sharing that. Sounds like every, mentoring firm is different and you gain very, very different um, skill sets yeah. from them. For our final question, um, we'll start with that. What is one thing you like people to think about when considering participating in a mentoring firm? A lot of what you have heard today uh, from this panel is about the variety and the flexibility of mentoring engagements. Um, Vidhi was speaking about one-on-one uh, -on -one mentoring, peer group mentoring, um, team competition mentoring. Uh, Lisa and I spoke about community-based mentoring. 
one thing that I'd like people to walk away with is understanding the rich nature of mentoring, that it is an opportunity to be in a safe place with someone who is interested in your development and will guide you while you do the hard work of uh, figuring out what you need and what is the best way to address those needs. Uh, if I may just say one uh, more point about mentoring, um, we talked about informal mentoring, we talked about formal mentoring, um, but one more point is to emphasize the difference between mentoring and a few other supported uh, engagements like coaching. Coaching is very different in that it is um, the coach has the responsibility for making exercises, drilling you, that type of thing. Think of it like a baseball coach. Um, and it's different than sponsorship. Now, a sponsor is someone who helps your career advancement, but is not nurturing your career growth in the same way as a mentor does. A sponsor is someone, think of it this way, who carries your paper into the room, who makes other people aware of what resources and abilities you have and promotes you for opportunities, whether it be uh, jobs, uh, new jobs, or other types of advancements. The, the, the engagement with the sponsor is a very particular, very focused, single purpose, not a ongoing long relationship like a coach or like a like a mentor. No, thank you, Miko. Thank you. Vidya, what advice would you give folks who are considering participating in a mentoring program as a mentee? Yeah. Um, I would say like um, each program which is offered by women in big data is completely unique. Like we never, I never felt like it's like a reputation. So it's always a great opportunity, like a networking opportunity. And in terms of like a group mentoring, like uh, talking with the women in a, like in a breakout rooms, as well as like a one-on-one mentoring. And I would say one-on-one mentoring will help me with based on my goals. So it's, uh, and I've started applying both in a professional and in personal life. So uh, in my school life, I am feeling comfortable like asking questions in the class. And even in personal life, like uh, before, like if someone asked me like, how are you doing? I'm just say I'm fine. Like, I don't want to start a conversation. So, but now I'm feeling comfortable even having like a short form of a chat with them. So I feel good. Like I'm gaining something from each person when I'm talking with them. And uh, also with the data science Olympian, I would say it's a great opportunity in terms of technical as well as the non-technical in terms of technical, like learning the code and understanding the real world problem to come up with a solution. And in terms of non-technical, I would say it's more of like uh, building a relationship with the team and managing them. And uh, with the Mentor in Tech International, it's more, it is also a one-on-one uh, mentoring program. So I would say like, please take as many programs as possible because each program will help in terms of uh, uh, filling the skills and I would say it's a uh, all this program will help in both technical and non-technical which is a crucial in data analytics as well as in other careers as well so I would say don't hesitate to ask help there are women who always uh, uh, give us a good feedback and help us so please take as many programs as possible thank you it also sounds like it's up to you what you gain out of them. Lisa, uh, last question for you, for all of you. What is one thing you like people to know if they are considering um, being a mentor? <laughs> well, I'm going to use a phrase I used with the 
all of many of you when we were planning this panel is always remember you are the smartest person in the room. And I think it's so important. Um, I think sometimes as women, we sometimes suffer from imposter syndrome where we hesitate to be a mentor because we question, uh, you know, am I, do I really understand data science? Like Vidya really knows data science. You, you sometimes have that imposter syndrome. It's like, do I really know what I'm talking about? Can I really mentor somebody? And, and you have knowledge and experience to share in some way. You have something you're passionate about. Like Vidya is passionate about data science. And so she is an excellent person to jump into a mentor role, to help someone. Uh, for me, I think, uh, it, for me, it was interpersonal skills uh, of engaging with people and, and helping people learn how to, to uh, interact with other people and, and engage with them and help them uh, progress in their career by the way they engage with people. Um, the other thing that, um, that I found is you learn a lot about yourself and you improve because of it. Uh, so to be a mentor, you have to be a mentee. So you have to be able to listen to what they're sharing but listen to what they say. And sometimes you learn something about yourself and you actually become better from it. Um, and don't be afraid to fail. Uh, that was one thing uh, I had to accept was one of the persons I mentored signed up to be a, to be a mentee. But as I, as I was working with them, I started to realize they weren't really open to being a mentee. And, and that will happen. You, there are sometimes you will, uh, it, it just won't work out and it's okay. It's okay to fail. Don't give up, you know, go back in there because the second person I mentored, I think, uh, you know, I got really good feedback and she progressed in her career and, um, and, you know, we had a really good working relationship. So, um, that would be what I would say is like, get in there, find something you're passionate about that you would want to mentor about somebody on and uh, take that knowledge and listen and guide, <laughs> but leverage that knowledge and don't be afraid. No imposter syndrome. You know what you're talking about. There is some area of passion that you know about in data, in personal, in community. Jump in there and do it. And don't be afraid to fail because you learn a lot about yourself and others. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like I learned a lot from all of you also as a person who has been both a mentee and a mentor as well in various capacities. I feel like I will have a little point to take from every part of the way. Um, well, let's give a round of applause for all our panelists. And we will be, it doesn't seem like there's any questions uh, and let me know if there are. Uh, we will be starting a state monitoring session for uh, perhaps you have some burning questions that you would like to ask. We will be, uh, you'll have the opportunity to speak to mentors about specific questions. And these will be short discussions, three to four minutes per mentee who is asking a question. If there's time left over, the mentor might decide to circle back on to a certain copy or clarify any questions. Please remember that um, be respectful of everybody's time and everybody's privacy. As a reminder, the session is in the breakout rooms and are not being recorded. So you'll need to take your own notes.